our final exam review. Okay, so now we're going to get into a specific type of sequence. It's very specific. It's called arithmetic sequences and series. So now it is going to be a specific pattern, guys. It's going to be arithmetic. So arithmetic sequences have what we call a common difference. Essentially, you're going to be adding the same number each time. That's what makes it arithmetic. Now notice I use the word difference. It's like a subtraction thing. And that's because you actually work backwards to figure out what you were adding each time. So for example here, this would be considered arithmetic because 2, 5, 8, 11, what are we adding each time? We're adding 3. Now how do we essentially find that we actually do what's called a difference? We go backwards. We start with 11 and we do 11 minus 8. 11 minus 8 is 3. Then 8 minus 5 is 3. 5 minus 2 is 3. So that means that our common difference, CD is a common difference, our common difference is 3, which means we were adding 3 each time. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. So now here's how we can write a general, here is the general formula that would recreate all arithmetic sequences. So it's nice because you don't have to do any guess and checking anymore. This formula always works, but keep in mind, it only works if the sequence is arithmetic. That's super important. You would not use this formula for anything that's not arithmetic. So it is a sub n, which means any term in the sequence is equal to a sub one, plus n minus one times by d. So what do each, what does each thing stand for? Well, a sub one means the first term in the sequence. And it is two, so let's start writing out our general formula. a sub n is equal to, our a sub one is two, plus, now n stays n, we're writing a general formula, so we're leaving it general. So we're gonna leave n as n, n is the variable, n minus one, and then we're timesing that by our common difference. Our common difference was three, so times by three. Now that's your general formula. We're gonna get in the habit though of simplifying our general formula. So from here I would take three, distribute it in. So then we would have a sub n is equal to, right now we have two plus three n minus three. Combine like terms. Our general formula is going to be a sub n is equal to three n minus one. That will always work. It's so nice, this formula always works. So now look, does it really work? Plug in one, one times three, is three, three minus one is two. Plug in two, three times two is six, six minus one is five. You guys see how it really does work. So just, you're gonna have to have this memorized going in. Now do note that a lot of times they just call this A. A is the same thing as A sub one. So don't let that freak you out. If you ever see A, that is the same thing as A sub one. Okay, so it says four, sorry, nine, four, negative one, negative six. The first thing I would check is, is this arithmetic? We have to know that. So you would do negative six minus negative one. Guys, negative six minus negative one. What is that? Negative five. Let's keep going. Negative one minus four. Negative five, right? Four minus nine. For it to be arithmetic, you have to be subtracting five each time, and we are. So if it changes, it's not arithmetic. Everybody good? So if it's arithmetic, then we can go write the formula or the definition for the arithmetic sequence. So that would be a sub n is equal to a sub one plus n minus one times d. Let's do it. a sub n is equal to a sub one was nine plus n minus one times by negative five. You would then distribute your negative five in. So then that would be nine plus negative five n plus five. So wouldn't that be, our general formula would be a sub n is equal to negative five n, and then nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, plus 14. There's your general formula. Now in this one it says write the recursive definition for the sequence. You will be asked on the test, and if you miss this, you're missing one of the easiest problems. Now what does recursive mean? It's a definition or a formula that you write that uses the previous term. So first of all, how could we recreate nine, four, negative one, negative six? So we'd say a sub n is equal to, what are we doing? We're taking the previous term, so we'd say a sub n minus one, we're taking the previous term and then we're doing what? Subtracting five, aren't we? Everybody? 
We're subtracting five. Now you have to tell it where, where with this type of formula, they have to know to recreate this where to start. So then you'd say, given that a sub one is nine. So then you'd say, starting with nine, take the previous term, subtract five, and that's how you could recreate it. Does that make sense? Recursive. All right, now it says find the 40th term. If we're trying to find a term, a certain term, you're gonna wanna use the nth formula, the direct formula, so this one right here. So then you'd say, I'm gonna find a sub 40. So a sub 40 is equal to, you have negative five, have, grab a calculator times 40, and then plus 14. You'd plug it into your general formula. We wouldn't wanna to try to figure out our recursive definition, because we'd have to know the 39th term, which we'd have to do it all out the way out to get that. Yes. We, I'm using this right here, the simplified answer. If you plug it in on here, you need to. Does that make sense? Anyone calculate that for me? 186? Perfect. Negative 186 would be the 40th term. Is that making sense to everybody? Plug it into the formula. Okay. this one. Now, guys, every problem is going to be a little different. That's what's hard. So you really have to, when you sit down for the test, um, know your formulas really well. And I, every time I have a problem, I write down my formula because then I say, okay, I know I'm going to be using this. So it says right here, if the 11th term of an arithmetic sequence is 52 and the 19th term is 92, find the 100th term. Now, we're going to not want to have to do write out 100 terms. So we're going to want a general formula. But we can't find a general formula without knowing all this information. So let's go write out a kind of a visual for ourselves. So we're at the, here's a sub one, we don't know, true? Then dot, 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 we finally get up to a sub 11. Our 11th term is 52. Then we have dot, 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 up to our a sub 19. Our 19th term is 92. And then we have dot, 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 and then they wanna know what is a sub 100. Does everybody kind of see our visual here? So let's go plug in what we do know. So let's look here. Now think about it, guys. This a sub n is what would our, our answer would be at a certain term, correct? So let's go to a sub 11. Now right here, this is not a sub 11 in our formula. It's 52. Wouldn't a sub 11 equal 52, everybody? Mm -hmm. So we know that we have 52 is equal to, we don't know what a sub 1 is, we have no idea, do we? So a sub 1 is still a sub 1. Plus, we do know what n is, don't we? So uh, n in this one is 11, so we have 11 minus 1, and then we don't know what the common difference is. So then times by d. So let's simplify that. So that's 52 is equal to a sub 1 plus, and then isn't that 10D? 10D, perfect. So we have two unknowns, so that doesn't help us for now. So now you'd say, okay, well let's set up another true statement. So we do know this as well. So you'd say a sub n is 92, we're at 92, and that's equal to, we don't know what a sub one is, plus, and then our n we do know is 19 on this one, 19 minus one times D. So the simplified formula is 92 is equal to a sub one, plus 18D, 19 minus one is 18D. So now look at what we have, two true statements. This is a system of equations. If these are our two true statements, it's a system of equations. So I'm gonna take this and write it right here under this one. We have 92 is equal to a sub one plus 18D. Then solve, you guys see how this is x, y, x, y. Same thing as an x and a y here. So it's just a system of equations. So that is what we've been learning in this unit. In the last examples, we learned how to solve a system of equations. So do you want to solve by determinants? Do you want to solve by reduced row echelon form? How do you want to solve? Let's solve by a way that we've learned in this unit, just for kicks and giggles to practice. Reduced row echelon form, not determinant. I think determinant's gonna be the quickest for a two by two. Remember the determinant way was actually quick? Not that you're wrong, we could do reduced row echelon form. So let's maybe go with determinant because it's going to be really quick with a two by two. So everybody, 
you would say, okay, we're solving for, let's call this a sub one, let's call maybe x. It doesn't matter, it's just a variable. So this is, we have technically, look, I'm gonna rewrite this, everybody, look. This is x plus 10y, and that's equal to 52. I like to have the equals on the right. You guys see how I just rewrote the top equation? Then we have, right here, x, plus 18y equals 92. So then you'd say, we're solving this, we're finding an xy point, so then x is equal to dx over d, and y is equal to dy over d. So then the first step is to find original d. So let's find the original determinant. So remember the original term determinant comes from this. 110, 118, 110, 118. Let's calculate the determinant. This diagonal times, so this diagonal multiplied together is 18 minus this diagonal multiplied together. So the determinant on bottom is 8. So now we can go to our formula. X is equal to, we don't know, over 8. Y is equal to, we don't know yet, over 8. Okay? Let's now find DX. Now what did DX mean? That means take column X and replace it with these two things. So we put in our... Determinant, we're replacing it one and one with 52, 92. 52, 92, and then we would leave in 10 and 18. This is what we learned last time, so that's why I'm going fast. So somebody grab your calculator for me if you don't mind. 52 times 18. 936. And then minus, and then 10 times 92 is 920, so we get 16. So then on top we get a 16. Does everybody see how that was pretty easy? So x must equal 2. And x was really a1. So I'm going to go write that. a1 equals 2. Awesome. Let's go find what dy is. So then dy was take the determinant replacing the y column with 52 and 92. So we still have 1, 1 from our x column. Now we have 52, 92. So this will be quick. 1 times 92 minus 52 times 1. So wasn't that 20? No, it's not, sorry. 40. So then we have 40 divided by 8, which is 5. So y is 5. And then y wasn't y, y was d. So d equals 5. So now I'm going to scroll back up real quick. And now that I set up a system of equation and solved for what a1 and, and d is, now I can go make my general formula. So you'd say a sub n is equal to a sub 1, which was 2, we just found that, plus, and then n minus 1, and then our common difference was 5. So then you could distribute 5 in, so we have a sub n is equal to 5n, and then look, negative 5 plus 2, so that'd be negative 3, wouldn't it be? So now from there it says find the 100th term, so you would calculate a sub 100. So then 5 times 100 is 500. We're doing 5 times 100 minus 3. 500 minus 3. So a sub 100 is equal to 497. So a lot of work just to find the hundredth term. So a lot of times, guys, there's going to be multiple unknowns. Just start plugging stuff into the formula and setting up true statements. Let's see another one. Every problem is different a little bit. Okay, let's first look at summation notation. Now, just a reminder, here is a sequence, and it has an arithmetic pattern. We're adding four each time. Our common difference is four. Um, now I'm going to make it what's called a series by instead of having commas, addition signs. That's the same thing as finding the sum or partial sum. So here is a partial sum. Now recall, I can take this and rewrite it in summation notation, can't I? So let's rewrite this in summation notation. So we're doing the sum. Now how many terms are we summing up? One. This is a sub one. A sub two. A sub three. A sub four. This is a sub five. So aren't we summing up five terms? So n equals one to five. And then what formula goes here that would create one, five, nine, thirteen, seventeen? Well, if it's arithmetic, it's the formula 
a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So a sub 1, I'm going to do my work down here. So a sub 1 is 1 plus n minus 1, and then our common difference is 4. So then we would simplify our formula distributed in 4. So we have 1 plus 4n minus 4. Combining like terms, we have 4n minus 3. So then that's what goes here, 4n minus 3. The formula that creates the 1, the 5, the 9, the 13, the 17. And then we've written it in summation notation. This two? Yeah. It's always two in the formula. Always two. Always two. Okay. All right. So let's practice that. Okay, it says find the sum of 40 terms of 3, 7, 11, 15. Now on the test, you're going to check. First, I need to check. What kind of sequence is this? What kind of series? Is it arithmetic or is it geometric or what? So let's see. Is it, does it have a common difference? 15 minus 11. Four, right? Oh, but negative 4. No, it's positive 4. 11 minus 7, 4. 7 minus 3 is 4. We're adding 4 each time. So it is arithmetic. Now, if it is arithmetic, I would always have on the problem this formula written down and this formula. Now, in this one, this is find the sum. So let's go straight to our sum formula and see if we have everything we need. So we're summing up how many terms? The sum of 40 terms is equal to, then what's n? 40 divided by 2. What was the first term? 
3 plus, and then what's the last term? We don't know. Do you guys see how we have to pause? Don't we need a sub 40 in the final term? So we're going to push pause, and we're going to go to this formula real quick and figure out what a sub 40 is. So a sub 40 is equal to a sub 1, 3, plus 40 minus 1, and then our common difference was 4, so times by 4. So then we would calculate that. We have 3 plus 39 times 4. So somebody, if you wouldn't mind, what is that? Our final term, our a sub 40, where we're stopping adding, was 159. Perfect. So now we're okay. So with most of these problems, you're going to have to use both formulas, notice. A lot of times, they're going to make sure that you do. So then from there, calculate the sum. Our answer is what? So you just type it in. That's 20 times by 162. Right, 20 times 162? 2,240? So there's your answer. So just understand most of the problems you're going to have to use both formulas. Let's do another one. Are you guys having questions on that? Does that make pretty good sense? Okay. Because a lot of people will see the word sum and they think they're only using the sum formula. Most of the time you'll see in all of my examples, I end up having to use both formulas in some capacity. So let's do this one. It says find the sum of the first 50 odd numbers. So I do start with, well, I'm finding the sum, so I'm going to start with my sum formula. Now, if it's odd numbers, we're technically starting with 1, aren't we? 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus dot, 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 plus up to the first 50. So isn't this considered a sub 1? We're going up to the first 50 odd numbers, so this would be a sub 50, wouldn't it be? So now let's start with our, since we're asked to find the sum, let's go to our sum formula. So here we go. The sum of 50 is equal to 50 divided by 2 times, what's the first term? 1 plus, uh-oh, do we know the last term? <coughs> Not technically, do we? So we've got to hurry and go back to our other formula a sub 50 is equal to a sub 1 plus 50 minus 1 times by the common difference. We're adding 2 each time, so times 2. So then we have 1 plus 49 times 2. So then we get 99. So then we have 99. Does that make sense, everyone? Yeah? Okay. So now go ahead and give me the sum real quick. So that would be 50 divided by 2 is 25, 25 times 100, 2,500. So our sum is 2,500. Okay, just a couple different examples um, because they, they ask you all differently. We're actually, we're almost done with the lesson. The rest of the time will be yours, but you need to see how they all can be so different. Like, look at this one. It says, find the sum. Now, you'd have to check. So we're told, actually, in this one, sorry, in my instructions, I sort of said, find the sum of the arithmetic series. Now, because it's arithmetic, we use these formulas. You all understand that, right? Because we're going to be given different ones later. OK. So you'd say, I'm going to be using maybe just one of them, but most likely both of them. We'll see. All right, so it does say find the sum. So wait, here is a sub 1, here's a sub 2, and then this is a sub we don't know yet, correct? Now, if it's a sub 20, then we're summing up 20 terms, true? So we have to first, we don't know how many terms we're summing up, so we have this so far. S of n is equal to n over 2. We do know a sub 1 is 2. Plus, we do know a sub last term is 68. Now, we have a problem again. We don't know what n is. So, we've got to go figure out what n is. So, we're going to go use our other formula. Now, this is a sub n, technically, isn't it? Until we find out what n is. So, 
So let's plug in what we know. This is 68. The 68 is equal to, and we're plugging in a sub 1, which is 2, plus, we don't know what n is, that's what we're trying to find, so n is n, n minus 1, and then times by the common difference. So aren't we adding 3? So times by 3. So look at your true statement. Now we can solve for n. Get n alone. So the first step is to subtract 2. 66 is equal to n minus 1 times by 3. Next step is to divide by 3, isn't it? Or distribute one or the other. We'll calculate the same way. Divide by 3, divide by 3, so we get 22. Is equal to n minus 1. So then add 1, don't we? So the n equals 23. So this must be a sub 23. Does everyone see how I did that? Set up a true statement with the other <coughs> formula, and now I know n is 23. So now I can plug in 23. So if you wouldn't mind for my video, do this in your calculus. Like do 23 divided by 2, and then multiply that to 70. 70. 805. Yeah, that's right. So the sum is 805. Okay. We're almost done here. A couple more examples just because you can see it a few different ways. Notice not one problem has been the same yet. Well, maybe one. But Okay, let's just see if you could figure out how to do this one. It says, how many people can be seated in a theater that has 32 seats on the first row, then 34 seats on the second row? 36 seats on the third row, and so on if there is 50 rows total. Now, the question is, on the test, are they asking how many seats, for, do, we, do we need to add them up, or are we just finding the 50th row? In this one, what are we doing? We're adding them up. They want to know how many people total, period, end of story, they can see. See, I'm doing the sum. So we're doing the sum of how many? Fifty rows, aren't we? The sum of fifty rows is equal to fifty divided by two times a sub one. A sub one is thirty-two plus, and then don't we need the last term? We don't know what's on the fiftieth row. So once again, we have to push pause, go to our other formula real quick. Do a sub fifty. So a sub fifty is equal to a sub one, which is thirty-two plus, and then it was. 50 minus 1, and then our common difference is 2. Aren't they adding 2 seats each time? So then we have 32 plus 49 times 2. So what was on the fit? How many seats are on the last row? 50. You guys are doing great, really great. Stick with me because I know it's getting it's getting hard to stay focused because we've been learning so much today. But these are the last hardest examples. And people kept asking me first hour, I mean not first hour, in my early morning how to do them. So watch because they're, they're decently straightforward for the most part. Okay, so it says, how many terms of an arithmetic sequence, 5, 7, 9, were added if the sum came out to be... 572. So what you would do is say, I'm going to either use one of my formulas or both of them. We will see. So let, aren't we talking sum? So I start with what I'm talking. Now, this is the ending sum, isn't it? So that is equal. We're going to replace S of N with 572. So we have 572 is equal to, now we don't know what N is, do we? That's what we're trying to find, right? How many terms we summed up? So leave it, n over 2, and then a sub 1, what was the first term? 5, and then we have plus, and do we know our last term? No, and we also can't calculate it if we don't know how many terms we are adding up. Does that make sense? So you would just have to say a sub last term. We still don't know that. 
So look, we have two unknowns, n and last term. So let's go to our other true statement and see if we can plug in things and see if we can see what we know here. Now a sub n, technically guys, isn't that going to be, so a sub n is the last term. Isn't that where we're stopping? So we're going to call this a sub last term. And that's equal to our a sub 1 was 5 plus, we don't know what n is, n minus 1, and then times by our common difference. So times by 2. Now look at your two true statements. Do they have the same unknowns? So we have another system of equations to solve. So let's set them up in a pretty way. So if you look back up here, wouldn't it be prettier to take 2 and multiply it up, maybe? Take 2 times it up. So if you wouldn't mind 572 times by 2 to get rid of this division. So I'm going to rewrite this one in a prettier format. 1144 4 is equal to n. And then we should maybe, should we distribute our n in? Maybe? Or should we leave it for now? So n and then 5 plus a sub last. I'm just going to write a sub last. That's quite pretty, I would say. Okay, let's do this one. Let's distribute 2 in. So then we have a prettier true statement there would be a sub last is equal to 5 plus 2n minus 2. So a sub last is equal to 5 minus 2, 3 plus 2n. Now let's solve this one by maybe substitution. It doesn't matter how you solve, right? I just solve the other one by determinants to practice that. Shouldn't, isn't a sub last and a sub, if you have the same variables, can't you substitute? So I'm going to take and replace a sub last in my other formula with 3 plus 2n. So then I have 1, 1, 4, 4 is equal to n times by 5 plus 3 plus 2n. So then we have 1, 1, 4, 4 is equal to, I'm going to combine like terms. So we have n, and then we have 8 plus 2n. So now we would want, do you guys get see why I'm getting 8? So now we would want to distribute. 1, 1, 4, 4 is equal to 8n plus 2n squared. Well now look at that. We have a quadratic we have to solve. So we solve quadratics by getting it set equal to zero and then solving by factoring or quadratic formula. So let's get this set equal to zero. Let's put it in standard form. And then I'm in a quadratic formula because I don't want to have to do such big numbers trying to factor. So here we go. Let's get this set equal to zero. So we subtract 1, 1, 4, 4. Subtract 1, 1, 4, 4. So then put it in standard form as well. So we have 2n squared plus 8n minus 1144 equals 0. Now from here, we could do quadratic formula. So x equals negative b, that would be negative 8, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. And then it's all over 2 times a, so that would be all over 4. Don't divide like that because you can't do that. So we have x is equal to negative 8 plus or minus the square root. Somebody calculate that number. Not the square root part, what's under the square root? Because I'm showing my work. to possibly be a perfect square root. So now take the square root of that. So x is equal to negative 8 plus or minus 96 all over 4. This is actually coming out nicely. So now what I want you to do is take negative 8 plus 96 and then hit enter and then divide by 4. And then I want you to take negative 8 minus 96 hit enter then divide by 4. What do we get here? 
22, and this one's negative 26. We just found what n is. x is n in our equation. So 22 or negative 26 is the answer. Let's go back. How many terms did we add up? Either 22 or negative 26. Can you add up a negative number of terms? So we've crossed that out. It's like an extraneous solution. So 22 must have been how many we are adding up. Now, if you want to know if you're right, wouldn't you go back to this formula now and say, I'm going to plug in 22. 22 divided by 2, and then our first term was 5. And then you'd once again have to say, I need to go figure out what the 22nd term is. And then you'd find out what that is, and you'd calculate it. And if it really does come out to be 572, we know we did it right. Okay, you guys did awesome. That is, I believe, the end. Wonk, wonk, wonk. Oh, no. Okay, this one is the last one I promise. It's the last example. Because people see this and they freeze. It's easy, though. Now, here's one thing I need to point out. This says find the sum. Now, look here. There's a lot of important key features here. We're summing up the second through the 18th term, aren't we? Do you want to write out that many terms and add them up? No, because you're going to run out of time on your 60-minute exam. Do you guys see? So here's one thing to note. If it is linear, degree one, if you have a formula right here that's linear, which means degree one, you know that it is by definition arithmetic. Because arithmetic has the form a sub n is equal to a sub one plus n minus one times d. See, look, n to the first. So this always simplifies to be a linear true statement, just so you know. So you would see this on the test and you'd say, because this formula is linear, it's arithmetic, therefore I can use my some formula for arithmetic. So let's go plug in what we know. Now n is the number of terms we're summing up. People often put 18. Often people mess up on just figuring out how many terms we're summing up. Now if we're starting with the second term, the second term, and we're then adding up to the 18th, how many terms are we summing up? See, a lot of people want to say 16. That is what's incorrect. But I can see why you think that. Now here's why, everybody. That doesn't account for starting on the second term. If you start on the second term and then go up to the 18th term, you've summed up 17 terms. Does that make sense, everybody? So what you can do is do the top limit minus the bottom and then add one, because that doesn't account for this term. Yeah, there's a difference of 16, but it was starting here. Does that make sense, everybody? So you do 18 minus 2, which is 16, add 1, so 17. So you'd say we're summing up 17 terms. So 17 over 2 times a sub 1. How do you find the first term? Plug in the lower limit. So you plug in 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2. You guys see what I did? Then plus, what's the last term? You take 18, plug it in. Don't put 18 here. A lot of people do that. Don't put 18. That's not 18. 18th term. So that would be 2 times 18 and then minus 2. So what would that be? Because it was 36 minus 2, which is 34. So what was the sum? What's our answer here? 306. Cool. All right. So now go work on the homework for the last 15 minutes.